what I wanted to do was show you how we view the memory and storage hierarchy. And we actually really do view ourselves as the custodians of this hierarchy. And what we're doing today with Optane, with, with uh, Optane as both memory and storage to keep that hierarchy whole. And I think a good example of how we've, how we've been these custodians in the past is actually SSDs themselves, NAND-based SSDs. Uh, when we introduced the X25M in 2008, it was because we saw a hole in the hierarchy. We understood that the hard drive was now too far from the processor, too far from DRAM. There was a hole and we were spending too much time waiting. Um, we see another hole now, and that's why we've created and uh, obtained and, and fielded it into the into the world here. Um, so I think it's good to start out with how do we see the memory and storage hierarchy now, and and then work from there into the two flavors of uh, of obtain in the system and show why they why they both matter and how they are used. So the way we see it right now is not that nice pyramid that Marisa showed you and that you usually see. It's actually much more complex than that. And, and the reason it's complex is because of the way in which the system and applications are evolving. If, back in about 2005, Denard scaling ended, the free lunch ended. We no longer got higher performance and lower power uh, um, as we changed technologies, process technologies. And so what we did instead was we moved to a multi-core uh, future where we started adding cores to the processor. And by adding cores, we could add performance to that processor. Um, and we've now reached the point with many more than four cores, although that's all we pictured here. The interesting thing about this and the confluence of uh, cloud service providers coming in is in the data center, if you're interacting with the data center, you may well rent an instance. And that instance may well be a single core that you're renting. And so your, your application is running on that core and it sees that it has its own hierarchy. It sees that it has its own SRAM. It, and, and in fact, it does a little bit. It has its own L1 and L2, but the L3 is actually shared with the other cores on that CPU. And in fact, it's, it thinks it has its own DRAM image, but in fact, that DRAM is a physical resource that's shared with the other cores on that CPU. And the same is true for a 3D crosspoint as persistent memory or as an SSD on that, on that system. It's shared. So each of these devices thinks it has its own hierarchy, but in fact, it's shared. And that means the hierarchy needs to scale to deliver the capacity and the performance of the aggregate that those cores are requesting and make each core feel like it has its own hierarchy. Obviously, that's a challenge for the hierarchy. It means more capacity and it means more throughput. Adding to that, we have accelerators coming in now. Um, they, of course, have their own SRAM, often their own in-package memory with something like HBM. They, too, want to share the DRAM and, uh, say, the, the Optane uh, um, with the cores. And so that now has to scale. We have to scale the DRAM capability. We have to scale the Optane capability to be able to deliver what those uh, cores and what that processor needs. That's one of the big uh, things I'll, I'll, I'll push into on the next slide and show you what we're doing there. Interestingly, in the data center, things change a little bit when you get to bulk storage. So that 2x every three year size increase that we talk about is actually often stored in disaggregated storage across the network. And so that's the bottom part of the hierarchy. And I, I didn't list that as multiple hierarchies because there really it is a single resource that's being used across the data center, managed as a single resource. Of course, it's multiple SSDs. And the interesting thing that's going on there is you have uh, these very fast data center networks, increasingly fast data center networks, uh, dropping data very quickly into that storage. And you need something that can accept that data very quickly. We find actually um, makes a great acceptor of that data. And David will go into the impact of this some. And then you have to store all that data. And, and here we are innovating with QLC SSDs because that gives us the capacity for that 2X every three years. And we use those two together. And so what I'm going to do on the next slide is I'm going to show you how in that compute layer, we're using the two together. And then also uh, on, on, the, on a future slide, how in the storage layer, we're using those two together. And, and, and that's how we view the hierarchy. We really view it as a system. So you're talking about the data center view with that's right there, but uh, you know now the data center is uh, yes we have the cloud data center which is a football field kind of data center, but we have a smaller data center. Sometimes we refer them as the edge. I mean the smaller resource pools where we we have uh, everything maybe smaller maybe more integrated. Okay. Yeah. 
do you see the same paradigm works also for you know smaller scenarios like hyperconverged? I mean, if I think about a few nodes, for example, is yeah, it the I same kind of view? So certainly the top is the same because even in that instance, you still have multi-core processors mm -hmm. uh, and you still have a hierarchy that's dealing with, with that. And in fact, in the edge, you often have accelerators. So I would say the top part of the hierarchy, I wouldn't really view very differently. Um, in that case, you may have a multi-core application, but that multi-core application, even though it's not separate instances, will still scale its use of the hierarchy uh, by the fact that it has multiple cores operating on that data. You may or may not, in that instance, depending on how, how big it is, have disaggregated storage uh, over a local network. Um, but so, so the bottom view may, may follow the multiple hierarchies that we have here, or it may uh, end up in somewhat disaggregated. In the smallest instances, I think it would look more like the top, and in the bigger, it would look more like the bottom. But the usage models I'll describe are still relevant in either case, I think you'll see. Does that make sense? Okay. So I would say it looks very similar, yeah. especially on the top. Since I can't picture the really blown up image, I'll, I'll picture the simpler one. Uh, and what I wanna show you, if you look at the bracket, is how is the two layers I'll be talking about now. So I wanna talk about how we're using Optane SSDs together with NAND. Think about the bottom part of that hierarchy that I just showed you um, and, and, and as, as I go through this description. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem to some extent is driven by the march of technology. And that's pictured on the left-hand side. And, and what you see is that uh, what I'm picturing is time on the x-axis and then the performance per capacity of, of, of two different memory technologies uh, going forward in time. And, and it's mostly NAND, all the, all the blue points are NAND. And what we're saying is that, gosh, NAND is doing a great job scaling density. It's actually going at about 2x every two years. Performance, though, doesn't scale at that same rate at the NAND component level. And what that means is that performance per capacity is actually dropping over time. So imagine you're on one of those cores and you're accessing an SSD and you're accessing a data set size that's uh, fixed. And um, you have a certain requirement in terms of performance that you expect from that storage resource. And now that storage resource is being built out of these bigger SSDs, which increasingly have lower performance per terabyte. Eventually, you're not going to be able to get the performance that your application requires. Uh, and we see that happening in the data center for uh, heavier applications. And what that means now is you got to use the hierarchy. You got to you got to save yourself with the hierarchy. That red cross is is the intrinsic performance per capacity of, of uh, 3D Crosspoint, what we build Optane SSDs out of. And so what we have the opportunity to do now is have the smaller capacity, higher performance Optane SSD, use it as a layer in the hierarchy with the higher capacity, lower, lower, lower performance NAND SSD, uh, and use those two together. And there's a couple examples of how we do this on the right-hand side. I think you guys are probably familiar with tiering and caching. Uh, we're, we're doing this actively and others are doing this actively with Optane and with QLC SSDs where the reads and the writes actually first land in an Optane SSD and get that great performance and that really fast latency. It's where the hot data lives. As the data cools, it's moved into the a high capacity NAND SSD. Uh, and so that's where the bulk data sits. And you know, great examples of, of this is say vast technology where they've literally built their platform around Optane and and then QLC NAND and can then deliver very high performance at, at low cost. So that's a tiering and caching example. Lots of use cases fall, or, or, or lots of specific uh, products fall into this use case. Another one that's a little bit, uh, a little bit more subtle is this metadata and log use case. Think again about the chart I showed you on the last slide where you have this high bandwidth network coming into storage. Where are you going to put that data at very high performance? And how are you going to get it persistent quickly so you can acknowledge that to the compute side and have it move on with life and move on with compute? You, you can do that by landing it in Optane. Land it in Optane, and then as you can, uh, go ahead and trickle that out to the NAND storage, which is slower but is bigger. The other really cool thing about this is that means the writes only have to go to NAND when you don't have a read coming to NAND. And so you can improve the quality of service of the entire layer. And of course, metadata, the data about data that tells you, for example, where that data is actually stored in that layer is another great use for, for uh, Optane. 
um, there are many more applications uh, than just these two models. But I think these two models are really instructive in terms of how we're using these two layers to get the performance of Optane and the cost in this case of, of NAND. And, and we actually do the same kind of thing if I were to go ahead one more slide uh, at the memory layer. Um, in fact, I forgot to say something really important about the last layer. It's storage addressed. And what that means to the programmer is I do a file open and then I do a read or a write. All those filter drivers that the operating system has in it, all that operating system support is the same as it has always been for storage. Uh, I'm accessing storage LBAs. And so we're providing Optane in the way that folks who program on top of storage have code that lives on top of storage want to see it. That's what we're doing here. We can provide it in a different flavor, though, because it's, it's such a high performing persistent memory. We can actually make it memory addressed also. And that's what this slide is talking about. When it's memory addressed, we're really using it in conjunction most of the time with DRAM. And so if you look at the slide on the left-hand side, it's again one of these technology over time marches. This time we're plotting both the number of cores per CPU, that's the yellow, and in blue, the density of DRAM. Last time it was NAND, or the density of DRAM. Uh, and what you can see is that the number of cores is actually outstripping the density increases uh, of DRAM. And in fact, the trends are a little bit more divergent than this because Back to that CSP example, if I'm running an instance on a CSP, I don't want just one gigabyte of storage. I, I often want four or eight gigabytes of storage. So you'd have to multiply that yellow line by the four or the eight. And what you see is that DRAM isn't increasing in density rapidly enough to provide the memory capacity that we need. Uh, and so how are you going to solve this problem if you run a data center or, or at the edge? Because the same problem occurs there. Uh, you're going to solve it either by buying a lot more DRAM, that's expensive, or you could solve it with the hierarchy. And so our solution is back to the hierarchy. Uh, we add Optane now memory addressed. So now uh, you would still do a file open uh, because you have to work across power cycles if you care about persistence. But from then on, it's a malloc, uh, it's an MMAP, and it's a load and a store directly from the CPU to the memory itself without the operating system in the way, without the operating system adding cycles and, and, and delay. Um, it's amazing that you can do that actually with this technology. And what are the models you could do? Well, hey, these look familiar, don't they? It's the same use of two hierarchy levels, but now this time for memory, not for storage. And so in the top, when you read and write, you, I'll, I'll take this to a programmer. If I'm a programmer, I could say, well, I have a memory area and I have I have a DRAM area and I have an Optane area, and I'm going to take the data structures I have that are most commonly used, and I'm going to put them in DRAM uh, when I allocate memory. And if I have a big data structure that is less commonly used, I'm going to put that in Optane. Uh, and now I know as the programmer that those things are true, and I can get the performance of DRAM because I'm accessing it most of the time, and the capacity of Optane because my big data is there. If I didn't want to do it myself, I could use memory mode. Uh, and now the hardware actually in the processor will decide which data goes where and move it back and forth with me. Um, or I could even use something like uh, Mem Memverge is pioneering where it's software that moves it back and forth between those two memory resources. In any of those cases though, I'm getting the performance of DRAM and the capacity per cost of Optane. And so I'm using it in that tiering caching mode. Uh, I can also use it in the bottom one is actually pretty interesting in that metadata log structure that I talked about before. And here we're actually using the persistence of persistent memory uh, where those writes could actually go to persistent memory. Um, why would I do that to persistent memory instead of storage? Well, maybe it's because the thing I'm writing is small. It's smaller than a storage sector. Uh, and now I only have to write the bits that I need. I don't have to pad it out. It's also a great place to put metadata because metadata tends to be small. Uh, and accessing it as, as memory gives you a lower latency as well. And then I can trickle those writes out to the, to the big storage again. So again, I, there's a number of applications that fit within this model, but the point is we've got a technology problem and we're addressing it with two technologies and the hierarchy. And this is really how we view the hierarchy up and down. I spend a lot of time at Intel up and down the whole hierarchy. Um, and, and this is the way to ship High performance systems at, at reasonable cost. A question on the on the modes for this. So you've you've mentioned that you're mixing essentially two media types, but what Intel provides 
the, the package that you provide is Optane as a, as a discrete device. As far as I'm aware, you're not actually combining, say, um, DRAM and Optane in a single package that you plug in and you're not sort of put front-ending Optane with SSDs with like QLC where it's both in the same package and you you do all the heavy lifting and I just plug that into my into my server and get that magic. Are they That's right. separate, we, sold separately? We actually think that it's best to provide them separately because it lets the customer pick the ratios that they want. Were we to provide it as a an aggregated uh, a thing, then you have to actually buy the ratio we created, right? Um, instead, you have a whole bunch of DIM slots and you get to decide if you want to populate them with persistent memory or with DRAM. And so you can pick the ratio that you want. There is actually a case in client where we combine the two. Uh, a client SSDs are H10 and, and are just announced H20 actually does combine the two. And so there's a fixed ratio. Makes sense to do in client because there's only one slot. And so you could, you'd could you have to pick one or the other. But we often have this discussion, even for Optane SSDs, thinking about the data center, would, we could build a hybrid where we put both on the, on the same SSD. In general, we think, though, that our customers want to pick their own ratio, um, and so they want it uh, separate, and then you aggregate it at the system level.